one of the most common questions I get today from students are, Jay, how in the world are you finding deals? How's everybody else finding deals? Because like there's no inventory, there's nothing in the multiple listing service. Well, guess what? There's plenty of deals out there as long as you are consistently marketing and you know how to find them. Um, and then after that, who knows? I might even tell you about my house that Carol Joy and I and the team here are closing on tomorrow on Pearson Circle, $500,000 after repaired value, buying it for $200,000. Sounds like that's got a little bit of spread, right? Uh, we're closing on that tomorrow. And uh, so anyway, yeah, we're talking real deals. I mean, here at the Private Money Academy, we're not talking fluff. We're not talking theory. We're not talking, I think this might work. We're talking about what's actually working right here in this market. All right, let's talk deals, folks. Let's talk deals. We're going to start with Stu and Harriet Baldwin up in New York. And um, they are Platinum and Mastermind members. And I see Harriet is showing, oh, my word. This is the deal we're going to talk about. Did you actually, did you actually buy that? We bought this. <laughs> I'll let you explain it. And then I have an after picture that will help you understand why we bought it. Okay. So before you start, let me remind everybody, Stu and Harriet. So when we started working together, I mean, they've been in the PMA forever. They're Platinum and Mastermind. They, they came to me and my team with already a hundred houses in their portfolio. And they just wanted a few more million dollars in private money. But this is these this couple's very seasoned real estate investors. So I want you all to listen closely. I have no idea what they're going to tell, but I know it's going to be the truth. I want you to listen very closely to their story. And I want you as as you are learning lessons and picking up things, I want you to type it in the chat as to what your takeaways are. All right, Stu and Harriet, I'm going to be quiet and let you all tell it. Thank you, Jay. Nice to uh, have this opportunity to share. Uh, I've been in one form or another real estate for about 40 years, uh, mortgage broker, mortgage banker, real estate developer, now real estate investor primarily. Harriet's been working with me for about 15 years. Uh, this is an interesting deal. Uh, we live in a low cost area of upstate New York. Uh, it's called Elmira. We're close to Corning. We're not too far from Ithaca, where Cornell University is, for any of you that would have that geographical fix. Um, this deal came to us as a result of a referral from Business Networking International, which is a group that Jay uh, pitches as being very useful, and we would second that. Uh, the local BNI group, which uh, I helped start and was the original president of, and now Harriet's the president of. There were uh, presidents in between. Yeah. Um, in, at the moment includes a demolition contractor. And this is how the deal came to us. The demo contractor was called by the homeowner. Uh, this is the second of the two houses that are on the property, uh, which is another wrinkle in the whole deal. But uh, the homeowner wanted to have the houses torn down. Uh, they no longer live next door. Uh, and uh, they wanted to, in essence, leave a present to the neighborhood by getting rid of this eyesore. Uh, the demo contractor gave them a price that was way more than they wanted to spend. But when they kind of demurred on going with forward with the demo uh, because he was in our networking group, the contractor said, uh, wait a minute, you know, maybe Stu and Harriet would buy this house from you in its current condition. Uh, let me put you in touch with them. So he did. Uh, and we talked, they were asking 25 grand for uh, what is a larger single family house in the front. We haven't shown you that picture yet. We only have a good after of that one at the moment. And a, a two-family house in the back, which Harriet showed you the deplorable condition. You can see that was in. why they were thinking about tearing it down. Uh, so we negotiated down to twenty thousand, and then there was another wrinkle in the deal. 
uh, that two family in the back, because it had also been vacant for 15 years, had long ago lost its ability to be a two family house legally. So we had to go to zoning to get permission. So we made our offer contingent on zoning approval. And that was okay with the seller because they knew it had to get uh, blessed by the village. Because they knew if we couldn't get that approved, they were going to have to pay to have it demoed. <laughs> so we did go to zoning. We got approval. Uh, they were thrilled that somebody was going to bring these properties back to life after 15 years of just sitting there vacant and an eyesore in an otherwise very nice neighborhood of our neck of the woods. Uh, so we renovated both properties. Yeah, we'll show you this now the, the after before. for the back property. This is the after. Yeah, and that's the small house at the back. And then Harriet will show you the main house in the front. This is the front house. We got both of these for $20,000. Now, we did have to spend a bunch on them, but Stu will give you those details. So the re... All in the rehab costs were about 110. So we bought it for 20. We spent 110. Uh, we, we just got the appraisal from the bank yesterday at 232,000. So other than a few bucks of carry cost, that's a nice home run. Again, for our neck of the woods, which is a low cost area. And remember, it looks, whoops like this oh. so banks were going to laugh at us if we were trying to use any kind of traditional financing so without jay and his private money program unless you had the money in your pocket not just the 20 grand to buy it but the what was it 110 of rehab costs oops nothing so, so uh, real quick questions to inherit um and i'll let you pick up where you left off so you bought the whole property with with two houses on it for 20 grand? Yes. Correct. And your total rehab, were you, so were you able to subdivide it and make two different properties out of it? No, it's a small lot. Uh, it's only about 7,500 square feet. Um, and you know, we understand this wouldn't work for everybody, especially not if you were brand new to real estate, but we do have a, most of what we do is buy and rent, rent, rent in the long term with giving people options. So for us, holding on to this makes perfect sense because it'll cash right. like nobody's business. So you bought the property, two houses for 20 grand. The rehab of 120, was that the rehab for both houses? The rehab it's of 110 was the total for both houses, yes. Okay, so 110 and 20, so you got 130 in it. And um, so you're, so what's the value now, would you say? So, yep, we just got the appraisal yesterday done by the bank, 232000 Sounds like over a $100,000 swing to me. Yep. yep, yep. And the monthly rental should be about? It'll be anywhere between three and 4000 a month. So once we refinance, uh, given that interest rates, regular bank type interest rates are so low, uh, it'll cash flow nicely, uh, and that's a yeah. good area. So that it'll, is uh, awesome. That's awesome. Now the, the money part, of, the money part of it would be interesting to some of the folks. Um, this also has a BNI thread to it. Uh, there was a commercial banker that was the BNI member in our chapter a few years ago. He never invested with us, but he turned us on to two of his buddies who did invest with us. And in literally the week that I got the contractor's estimate for what this whole rehab job was gonna cost, and I'm sitting, sitting around trying to decide, hmm, wonder where that money's gonna come from. I get a call with unsolicited from one of these banker referral investors that had been with us for a few years and saying he just sold an apartment house and uh, could I find a use for 300 grand? Uh, obviously I said, yes. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm drawing up the loan documents and everything. And uh, before I even finish, uh, he emails me back and he says, well, actually I'm gonna make that 300, 400,000. I don't think you'll mind. <laughs> and so, 
I didn't. So basically, it was a God thing. You know, the money showed up exactly when it needed to show up. And that's uh, what we use to complete the rehab. And it all goes back to, to BNI uh, on the one hand. And then uh, this current investor, I had had him listen to the webinar that you did for us, Jay. And I credit the webinar with being part of his motivation to part with that extra 400 grand. And this is another one of, uh, proves another one of Jay's uh, very common uh, admonitions. They always have more money than what they tell you they have. Uh, so he, I think he's probably uh, done about 800,000 altogether, including that relatively new 400. Uh, so that was a very uh, easy way to finance, uh, and the money turned up just when it was needed, and it's a good shout out to both Jay's process and to BNI. So if any of, awesome. you, any of you listening are not already looking into a BNI in your local area, I would encourage you to do it. Uh, because we've raised almost three million bucks from BNI members or their referrals in our local market, which is not a big metro area. This is Elmira, New York, with uh, a county of about eighty-five thousand people. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much the story. If you have any questions or comments, Jay, uh, happy to hear them. I love it. Well, I'm looking in the chat right now. Lessons learned. Uh, let me let me scroll back up here. Uh, lessons learned from um, your deal. Join B and I and get referrals. I just thought of another one. Like you two, if there's not a B and I in your local area, start a B and I, <laughs> and you'll be seen as the uh, you'll be seen as the local go-to person. Uh, Bowie says I was quite successful at B and I from my brokerage business. Haven't been a member in several years. Uh, wondering if I should apply to join one. The answer is yes, you <laughs> should. Uh, make some offers contingent on improved zoning. Um, Glenn and Kerry, got to have vision when you're looking at that before picture. Uh, lesson learned from Sean. Don't be afraid to negotiate. Amen on that. Um, Kelly, woohoo, that's amazing. Uh, lesson learned, private money gives more flexibility. Well, you said that, Harriet. There weren't no institutional lender or banker going to give you money on that. Um, let's see here. I can't read who it was, but somebody said there's profit in condemned properties. Amen. Uh, Bowie says, I bought a house that perhaps was even in worse shape. Snakes crawling out from under the floor. Woo, <laughs> mercy, nasty. Uh, another lesson learned, wow, BNI. BNI is the key to this deal. Uh, BNI ASAP from Linwood, a uh, fellow Platinum uh, Mastermind member. Bowie joined BNI. Uh, Bob, what is BNI? All right, Stu, you got 15 seconds to tell everybody what BNI is. Yeah, it's a worldwide business networking group called Business Networking International. It's been around since about 1985. Uh, I forget how many worldwide members there are, but collectively worldwide, they passed about $20 billion of business amongst members. Uh, and as I said, we've raised uh, almost 3 million of additional capital in our tiny little local BNI from yeah. members or their referrals. It's designed to help local businesses do more business with each other, help each other grow, and there's pretty strict accountability. I mean, it's fun, but it's a purpose. It's not just coffee. Yep. Scott Beach, uh, Platinum Mastermind member, says Business Networking International. Yep, that's it. And uh, Thomas says, always great to use other people's money. A, a fantastic case study there, Stu and Harriet. What's your recommendation to all the PMA members, Private Money Academy members? Uh, what should they do? What's the next step they should do to enjoy the kind of experience that you are and have? They should come to the live event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were we were in the same boat that uh, the people listening in from uh, Private Money Academy are at the moment. We literally 
were on the January 2020 private money call like this, we decided to sign up for the February 2020 live event, not even obviously knowing at that point what COVID was going to do to everybody's lives, but knowing that we could always use some additional capital. And so we came to the live event. We availed ourselves of the opportunities that Jay will make available to you. Uh, and here's the bottom line, folks. Because of what Jay did for us, uh, directly correlating, we have raised a million four of additional capital from people that listened to the webinar that Jay put together for us and would be willing to put together for those of you that sign up for his guidance and follow instructions. So if you wanna raise a lot of money, and again, we're not in New York City, we're not in Atlanta, we're not in Chicago. This is a tiny little area of upstate New York, but we were still able to use Jay's tools to raise actually a little over a million four so far. And some and, of those people will uh, be giving us more. And it's just not the money directly from the webinar. We had been pretty stagnated in terms of growth for two to three years before we came to the live event. And we have gone from 100 houses to 150 in the last two years. Units. Units. That's no, that's awesome. Units is 180. That's awesome. That's awesome. Y'all, let's give Stu and Harriet a great big golf clap right there for sharing the case study and the story. That's it, folks. Real deals going on. Yes, Stu? I know. Just thank you, Jay, and we'll see you next month. All right. You got